Hi, Sandeep here with another tutorial on Android game development using Android Studio and Java. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to make this. Let's get started. If you want to master Android apps and games development, then click subscribe and the bell icon. And let's do this together. Open Android Studio. I am using Android Studio latest version called Electric Eel. Click New Project. Select Empty Activity. Click Next. Write the project name. Save Earth for me. Write the package name. Usually, it is the website address in reverse order dot project name. I am going to save on my desktop. For language, select Java and for minimum SDK, select API 24. Click Finish. Now wait for Android Studio to build and configure your empty project. Now, if you get an error like this, it's because Gradle JDK can't find the Java path. To fix this problem, go to File, Settings, click on Build Execution Deployment, click Build Tools, Gradle, and select the appropriate JDK. I'm using Android Studio Java Home. Click Apply and OK. Also, go to File, Project Structure, modules and select the same version that you are using for Gradle JDK. Let me click on device manager and run the emulator to be able to show you that Android Studio is working correctly. Click the green run button to run the default application. Perfect. As you can see, Android Studio ran the application successfully. Next, I am going to import all the image assets and audio assets into Android Studio. Closely look at the dimensions of these individual image files. This image will be used as launcher icon. I will show you how to add a launcher icon into your Android app. Next, check out the sound effects I will be using in this game. I will copy these 5 images into our project's drawable folder under RES. Next, I will design the activity underscore main.xml file. A linear layout is good enough for our requirement. So, I will just remove constant layout and use linear layout. Delete this text view since we don't need it. Also, you can remove this line which is grayed out. I am not going to talk about layout designing in XML in this tutorial since I have already created so many tutorials on this topic for you on this YouTube channel. Please check them out. Check out the design. Simple and whatever we expected. Click Start Game, press Alt Enter and click Create Start Game in Main Activity. This will basically create the empty method for us where we can write our code. So when the yellow play button is tapped, this Start Game method is called. Here we have created an intent object and called start activity with that intent and finishing the current activity that is main activity. So this will launch game activity. Let's quickly create the game activity class by extending app compat activity. Oh. 
override on create. Delete the second parameter from on create as well as from the super call since we don't need that. Declare an object reference of game view class. We will create this class by extending view class. In on create, instantiate the game view object. Pass this as context to the game view constructor. Then call set content view using this game view object. Next, right click on package and create a new Java class called game view by extending view class. Click on the red squiggly line, press Alt Enter and click create constructor matching super and select the first one. We also need to override on draw and on touch event methods. Change the return statement to return true. By returning true from on touch event, you inform the Android system that you already handled the touch event and no further action is required. Now in this custom view class called game view, we will write all our business logic and drawing methods for this game. So this game view class is basically the heart of the whole project. We will start by declaring and defining some variables and objects in the class scope. Declare two integer variables for storing device width and device height. Declare bitmap object references for trash, hand and plastic. Declare a handler object reference. Make sure to import android.os.handler package. Declare a runnable object reference. Declare a long variable for storing 30. We don't need a long variable for storing a value of 30, but postdelete method needs it, so we declared it as long. Declare the x and y values for hand. These values are required for moving and drawing the hand image on canvas. Do the same for plastic. Declare a random object reference that is required to randomize hand y, hand speed, values and for positioning trash randomly at the bottom. Declare a boolean to detect whether the plastic bottle is moving towards the bottom or not. Define an integer variable for storing points and initialize it with 0. Define a float variable and initialize it with 120. This will be used for printing the points on canvas. Declare two paint object references for showing the points and the health bar. Define an integer variable for life and initialize it with 3. So we have only 3 lives in this game. Declare a context object reference. Declare an integer variable for storing hand speed. Declare two integer variables for drawing the trash image at a random exposition. The trash y value will remain the same since we have decided to place it at the bottom that is with a fixed y value. Declare media player object references for point when the hand completely goes away from the left edge of the screen and when the plastic bottle drops on the ground, that is, when it misses the trash. Create a new directory in RES called raw and copy your sound effects into that. Go to game view constructor 
and initialize this class's context with the context received in constructor. Instantiate a display object and a point object. Call get size method on display object and pass the point object as a parameter which will basically initialize device width and device height in x and y properties of point object respectively. Store them in d width and d height. Instantiate the three bitmap objects. The first parameter of decode resource method is the resource object and the second parameter is the id for the image. Duplicate this line twice and change the names of the bitmap objects and corresponding ids. Instantiate the handler object. Instantiate the runnable interface and overwrite run method. Call invalidate method from run that will call the onDraw method almost instantly by Android system and our view will be redrawn. Instantiate the random object. Initialize handex with dwidth plus some random value between 0 and 299. We did this to ensure the hand will appear in random delay from the right edge. Sometimes the handex value will be just d width so the hand will come instantly right after it goes away from the left edge of the screen. Sometimes it will be d width plus 299 that is the hand has to travel maximum distance. Hence there will be maximum delay and sometimes in between. Hope things are clear to you. We will give a random y value for the hand in between 0 and 599 so that it will appear from a random distance from the top of the screen. The plastic bottle should come along with the hand, so you need to initialize plastic x with hand x and plastic y with the bottom of the hand minus some threshold value, in our case 30, so that it can appear like the hand is kind of holding the plastic bottle. Instantiate text paint. Set its color to red using the RGB method. Set its text size. and alignment to left. Instantiate health paint.
set its color to green using the color class. So we have found two options to change the color of a paint object using the color classes properties and using the RGB method on color class. Try finding other options for providing a color. Initialize hand speed with a random value ranging from 21 to 50. You can experiment with this value and also provide a value based on the device width for a consistent animation in almost all devices. Initialize trash x and trash y so that we can draw the trash image at the bottom center of our screen. I will rename the media player object from MP points to MP point. Initialize the media player objects by calling the static method of media player class called create and by passing context and resource IDs for your sound effects. Initialize the other two media player objects similarly. Next, in onDraw method, change the canvas color to blue. Check if the plastic animation boolean is false. At the beginning, it is false. So, the if condition is satisfied and values of hand x and plastic x get decremented by the value of hand speed. And so we see the hand and plastic coming from the right edge of the screen and going towards the left edge of the screen. Always remember the x value of the left edge is 0 and the x value of right edge is same as device width. So for a right to left animation we need to decrease the x value of any object and for a left to right animation we need to increase x value periodically. Do you understand it clearly? Leave a comment or ask a question. When the right edge of the hand completely leaves the left edge of the screen, we will play the corresponding sound effect. Don't forget to check the media player object for null value. Reinitialize hand x, plastic x, hand y, plastic y, hand speed and trash x. We also decrement life since we miss to touch the hand. Also using a if block we are checking if the life is equal to 0. When true the game is over and so we will launch the game over activity or screen along with points using an intent that acts as a glue between activities. In the constructor of intent we have provided context for the first parameter. If you are inside an activity class, you can write main activity dot this or simply use this keyword. 
if you are inside an anonymous inner class you have to write main activity dot this the second parameter is the activity name then you put a dot and class for example game over dot class in the put extra method that we called on intent object you can attach the value of points as key value pairs and you can get this value in the destination activity using the key you set when you call start activity method on context object and pass the intent it will take the user to game over screen finish this current activity that is game activity when plastic animation is true increment plastic y for a top to down animation of the plastic bottle next we will check for the condition when plastic animation is true that is when it's moving in a top to down direction and plastic hits the trash so we can detect a collision between plastic bottle and trash when all five below conditions are met number 1 plastic animation is true number 2 right edge of plastic is greater than or equal to that is overlaps left edge of the trash number 3 left edge of plastic is less than or equal to that is overlaps right edge of the trash number 4 bottom edge of plastic is greater than or equal to that is overlaps the top edge of the trash and number 5 top edge of plastic is less than or equal to the screen height when all five conditions are true a collision between plastic bottle and trash is detected inside if body we will start playing the audio for points next reinitialize hand x plastic x hand y plastic y hand speed trash x increment points by 1 and set plastic animation to false as you can understand hand speed ranges from 21 to 50 every time it comes from the right edge of the screen and goes towards the left as you can understand we have given some threshold value on left and right of the ground where the trash can actually be drawn randomly and this doesn't cover the whole ground setting plastic animation to false will start the hand and plastic animation again from the beginning after initializing hand x plastic x 
hand y, plastic y, hand speed and trash x. I hope you have already defined a private method to execute these lines and call the method whenever required. If not, go and create that now and make your app more modular. Let's write code for situation when plastic does not hit the trash, that is when it drops on the ground. So, if plastic animation is true and bottom edge of the plastic just touched or exceeded screen height, we will do the following. Play the music for plastic dropping on the ground. Decrement life by 1. When life becomes 0, use an intent to go to game over activity along with points and finish this activity, that is game activity. These lines of code are also redundant, so put them in another private method and call from wherever it's required. Reinitialize the variables and set plastic animation to false. That will start the hand and plastic animation again from the beginning with random delay and random distance from top. Next, draw the trash, hand and plastic bitmap objects on canvas using draw bitmap method on canvas object. As parameters for the draw bitmap method, we need to pass the bitmap object, left value, top value and paint object in our case null. To draw the points, we can use draw text method on canvas object. The parameters are a string, x value, y value and a paint object. You can implement this optional feature that when life becomes 2, change health paint color from green to yellow. When life is 1, change it to red. Draw the health bar using draw rect method on canvas object. The prototype is void draw rect open close parenthesis inside the parenthesis float left comma float top comma float right comma float bottom comma paint paint. 
I want to give a right margin of 200 units to the rectangle and I have set the maximum length of our rectangle to be 180 units. So I have subtracted 200 units from D width which becomes the left value. Also I want to give a top margin of 30 units. So the top value is 30. The right value dynamically changes with life. It's D width minus 200 plus 60 times life. When life is 3, the width of the rectangle is maximum or 180 units. And when life is 1, the width of the rectangle is minimum or 60 units. For bottom value, I have given 80. So 80 becomes the height of the health bar. Hope things are crystal clear to you. When the life is not 0, that is when the game is not over, call post delete method on handler object and pass the runnable instance and the long variable update underscore millis as parameters. This will call the run method of runnable after 30 milliseconds since we have initialized update underscore millis by 30. In run method, we have called the invalidate method that will call on draw for us by the Android system and the view will be redrawn. Again, post delete is called from on draw. From there, run method is called after 30 milliseconds delay and the process continues till you press the back button of your phone to close the app. This is one way to create a simple game loop using only Android framework. If you understood the game loop logic, please comment with game loop done. This will encourage others to implement a game loop and this will also make me a little happy. Please comment. Next, inside on touch event method, get the x and y coordinates of touching point. Check if motion event action is action underscore down, that is when the player has tapped on the canvas or the screen. If this is true, write another if block to check if plastic animation is false and the touching point is inside the boundaries of the trash. If all the conditions are true, set plastic animation to true and this will evaluate the earlier if block to be true and increment plastic y for a top down animation of the plastic bottle until it hits the trash or the ground. Next, create the layout resource file for game over activity. Again, I will not explain the layout designing in XML since I have already created a lot of videos on this topic in this channel. Please check them out.
check the design. All right. Next, we need to create game over activity by extending app compat activity and overriding on create method. As usual, delete the second parameter from onCreate and from its super call. In the class scope, declare an object reference of text view that will be used for showing the points. In onCreate, right after super call, call setContentView method and attach the game underscore over dot XML into this activity. Initialize the handle for TP points. Get the value of points extra from the intent and initialize it in an integer variable also named points. Make sure the key names are equal in game over and also in game view class. Set TV points with the value of points. The set text method expects a string. So I concatenated empty string with the integer variable points to convert it into a string. But you can also use string dot value of within parenthesis points inside the set text method. If you see a red squiggly line here, don't worry, just clean the project. Next, go to game underscore over dot XML and try generating the restart and exit methods from the on click attribute. If you don't get suggestion for generating these methods, you need to manually create them in the game over class. This on click handler methods take a view parameter, even though we don't need it. I will copy the whole restart method, paste below, and change the name of the second method to exit. In restart, we will just create an intent object and start game activity class using the intent and finish the game over activity. In the exit method, we will just close the app. I will just delete this unused import statement and this empty line. Next, open themes.xml and add this style tag to make your game run in full screen mode. We also need to refer this theme in Android Manifest.xml within the opening application tag. We need to add activity tag for game activity and game over.
Delete the intent filter tags from the last two activities. It's only used for the launcher activity, in our case, the main activity. You can also specify screen orientation to portrait for each activity in your manifest file. Run the app to check the output. As you can see, the hand and plastic is coming from the right edge towards the left edge with random delay and random speed. Once you tap on the hand, it stops moving and the plastic bottle starts moving downwards. If it hits the trash, you get a point and the corresponding sound effect gets played. If it misses, you lose one life and the corresponding sound effect gets played. Every time when the hand appears from the right edge, the random trash X value causes the trash image to be drawn at a random region on the ground, with some area in left and right where the trash cannot be drawn. You can call it margin values for trash. Your points are shown near the top left corner and health bar is shown near the top right corner. When life is zero, the player is redirected to game over activity, where point is being displayed and from where you can restart the game or exit from it. I believe you have already figured out that the width of the health bar is not decreasing. Let's figure out the bug. Alright, in the draw deck method call of game view class, I have mistakenly used d height instead of d width for the right value, which generated a rectangle with more width than it should have. Sorry about this unintentional mistake. Let's quickly change this to d width. Let's run the app again. Congratulations, we have made it. You can pat on your shoulder and be a little bit proud of yourself for sticking up to this point of this tutorial and making this game a reality. Wonderful. Comment what you feel now. Next, I will demonstrate how to change the default launcher icon for this app. Right click on RES, New, Image Asset, select your 512 by 512 pixel image in the foreground layer. Resize your image if you feel like doing. In the background layer, Select the color radio button, click on the default color and using the dropper tool, select the color of the selected foreground layer. Click next. And make sure main is selected for the source set. Click finish and it's done. Run the app again to check whether the launcher icon is changed from the default to our own custom image. Excellent. If you are still watching, I am pretty convinced that you are a born action taker and a born finisher and I wish you all the best in your coding journey and career. See you in another tutorial. Take care. If you find this tutorial useful, please like and share the video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this.